this time. We thank you for this day, for this other day that I've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place today. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is true. And as we make a bold stand, Father, regardless of what we go through, Father, we realize, Father, that it's in you that we live and move and have our being. So, Father, I, sur I surrender my whole mind, will, and emotion to you today. And I thank you, Father God, that all things do work together good for them that love you and those who have called upon your purpose. Let not one word, Father, fall to the ground. Let it fall on the hearts of those that have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And God, I ask you in the name of Jesus that your word will be everything that you said it would be and more. Father, we bless you and we glorify you. We give you praise and glory for it all. Now, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. I want to thank you all for joining us today. And, and I pray that your hearts are, are prepared to hear from heaven today. Amen. And as we prepare to release to you the word of God, I believe that you will hear and receive something that will help you to see yourself as God sees you. Amen. You know, God wants us all to walk in deliverance. He wants us all to be delivered. He wants us all to have the peace of God. Amen. I'm going to sing you a song right now. And after I've done, after I've done with this song, we're going to go right into our lesson. But uh, I just want you to know that God is with you. Hallelujah. God is with you. So let us go ahead on and on. Uh, Let's get this song together. Praise God.
Glory to God. The Word of God has brought us to a place in our walk and in our life that he's now beginning to explain to us the importance of speaking the Word. Many people will cross our lives in days to come and have crossed our life in days that have come and gone. But there are those that will come across our life in the days to come that God will have you to minister to. And you will have to understand the power that God has made available to you. Amen. See, God has given you power over all the powers of the enemy, or of the devil. I want you to look at another scripture with me. Why are we over here? Look at Luke chapter 19, chapter uh, Luke chapter 10 and verse number 19. That's Luke chapter 10 and verse number 19. And it reads, Behold, I give unto you power to shred on serpents and scorpions and over all the power, I know what he said, over all the power of the enemy. Now, who is the enemy? The devil is your enemy. Amen. Behold, I give you power to shred on serpents and scorpions over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. You see, folks, God has given us everything that we need to walk in this earth as a child of God. But we have been so brainwashed that we have not truly or honestly believed what God had said or what God has given us in his word. Because the word has been lukewarm throughout many years of our lives and now that God is bringing us up to a place of understanding what he has said, now we got to work our way through all the religious uh, rituals that we received during our time and now we got to see ourselves rising above the status quo of life because God is calling us to a higher dimension than where we are. It is time for us as the church of God to begin to see ourselves as the churches of God, walking in the power of God, anointed by God to deliver His people and bring them to a place of security in Him. Glory to God. Now, we as a people of God, we have to understand that we play a great part in this because, see, we've been called out of darkness. We've been called out of darkness, but there are those that are, that are still walking in darkness. Even some of your loved ones, some of your family members are still walking in darkness, and, and you have become the light that God has brought. You, you're going to be that light that God's going to bring across their path of many, and then they're going to see how you have maintained your stability throughout the years when they first looked at you and said that you would never make it. You will only last a week. You will, you'll be back living the same lifestyle within a month. And now you, they see you now. They see that you're still striving. They see you still going forward. They see you still walking the walk that you've begun and, and, and days gone by. And now God is going to use you to be a light to them. God's going to use you to be a, a, a voice to them. Not an echo. God don't need no more echoes. God need a voice in these last days. Don't need an echo. He need a voice, someone that have, that have been with God, someone that have touched the face of God, someone who understands the anointing and the, and, the, and the calling of God. Someone that understands that they've been given power over all the powers of the enemy and not be afraid when, the, when things begin to happen around them, not to throw in the towel and take out running like a little scared dog. But God has given you everything that you need to, to accomplish the task that has been set before you. Amen. He says again, I'm going to read again, John chapter 4, John chapter, Luke, excuse me, Luke chapter 10, verse number 19. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to shred over serpent stroking of all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. God has given you everything that you need to walk this way of life. <coughs> But I want you to understand, to walk this way of life, you can't walk it as a pure man. 
You can't walk with that someone that don't know who you are. You got to see yourself in Jesus. You got to see yourself in Christ. You got to see yourself walking in his name. Because notice, let's, let's go back over here. Now, since we are in Luke, let's back up to, to the book of Mark, chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Because, see, I want you to understand something. It's time for us, as the body of Christ, it's time for us to begin to see ourselves the way God sees us. It's time for us to begin, begin to rise up. Because, see, God is about to pour out upon the church in these last days a presence like the church has never seen before. Hmm. A presence like the church has never seen before. And the glory of God is going to be revealed throughout the earth once again. Hallelujah. Now, notice what he said right here in verse number, verse number uh, 17. Mark chapter 16 and verse number 17. Because see, this is where, this is where you are going to be walking if you can take a hold of what God is saying to us right now. See, God is calling us to walk above the circumstances of our lives. Jesus was walking on the water when he saw his disciples in the, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the sea, tossed by the waves of the, tossed by the waves of the sea because of the storm that, 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 that had arisen up. Jesus walked right in the midst of the circumstances. He walked right in the midst of the storm of life. He walked right in the midst of the situation that was trying to discourage his people, trying to cause them to doubt who they were. He walked right out in the midst of it, and as he was walking, he would have passed them by. But Peter called out and said, and they began looking look at it and say, is it a spirit? Is it a ghost? And Jesus said, no, it is I. And Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you on the water. Now, Peter began to see himself walking in the supernatural. He began to see himself walking in the power of the word of God. He began to see himself walking on the word of God, walking in the word of God. What happened? He was out there walking in the power, walking in the word. Amen. But all of a sudden, he forgot and took his mind, took his eyes off of the one who called him. This has been the biggest problem of the church. We have called, we've been called out, but we have taken our eyes off the one who have called us, trying to rationalize things, trying to, edu trying to educate ourselves so much to the point that we can know more than him. <coughs> and you can't know more than him because he's all-knowing. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He knows it all. He, he's the God of all wisdom, all knowledge. Amen. So we can't know more than no matter how much we educate ourselves. And God wants to use what He has given us to bring to know the things that have broken in darkness. And how that's going to happen. It's going to happen when you and I begin to see ourselves as God sees us. Amen. Verse number 17 says, Mark chapter 16, verse number 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. You see, it is time for the signs to begin to follow you. See, you've been running behind the signs. You've been running behind the wonder. Somebody tell you somebody over here doing miracles. Somebody over there doing, uh, they, 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 uh, have a lot of uh, action going on, in, uh, activity going on in this ministry. You want to run over there and join the crowd. God is not wanting you to join the crowd. God wants you to be the one that create the miracles so the crowd will come to you. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so he says right here, verse number 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. Notice what he said, they shall cast out devils. Now what he said in Matthew chapter 8, <clears throat> now it's not Matthew chapter 8, uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Amen. Behold, I give unto you power to trade on service from the all powers of the enemy, that none shall my enemies hurt you. Notice what he said right here in Mark chapter 16 and verse number 17. And and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. 
They shall speak new tongue. If they drink any death, then shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, notice that the signs are following the one that believe in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God has the power, as we speak it in faith, out of our heart and out of our mouth, we can create the atmosphere that would produce the miracles, signs, and wonders that God has given us in his word. Amen? Because, see, God knows what he said right here verse number 20. Because the Lord is not going to let his word fall to the ground. He said verse number 20. And the Lord went with them, work, and the Lord went with them, and the Lord went forth and preached. And they went forth preaching, preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs Father. Amen. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs Father. I'm going to say that again. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs Father. Amen. So God will confirm his word as we begin to speak his word. These signs, these signs follow those who believe in the name of, of the, in, who believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. They will cast out devils. What are they going to do? They're going to cast out demons. They're going to speak with new tongues. They're going to take up servants. If they drink in their things, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. So who this, who, who going to be more, who, who these signs will become following? These signs will be following that believe on the name of Jesus Christ. So it's time for us to begin to believe the word of God concerning Jesus Christ like never before. You know, I, when I was in Bible school, I heard I heard uh, ministers say they just read the, uh, uh, the, the, the red letters and prayed the red letters all the time. Amen. And uh, they said they began, they began to see the miracle working power of God manifested in their life. Amen. But I like I like what uh, I, I like I like that because see that kind of helped me to understand where they were at. Because see when you can when you can locate a person you can see the direction of their head. Every believer has the ability to cast out devils. Did you know that? Every believer has the ability to cast out devils. But you got to be willing to speak the word of God. You have to be willing to speak the word of God. I remember when my wife and I first started dating, and uh, we were just, uh, we, wasn't even, we wasn't even riding in the same car together, but she had to, she was actually coming to some one of her disciples, out of one of women, to pray for her. And so as we went over, I drove my own vehicle, she drove her vehicle. We went over to, to pray with her, and, uh, and, and, uh, and actually, as we began to pray, all of a sudden, they asked me to pray, then all of a sudden, as I began to pray, the anointing fell upon this person, and this person just hit the floor and began to wallow like a snake on the floor, and began to begin to speak with a, a voice like I've never heard before, a real screeching voice. I know you, you are a holy man of God, you know, and, 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 I, and I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. And all of a sudden, it just dawned on me that this is a devil speaking. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her right now in the, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. What happened was I took authority and exercise authority in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall be cast out of them. You see, you got to see and know that God meant what he said when he allowed them to be put in the book. God wants you as a believer to begin to speak the word regardless of who it is that is, that is rising up, regardless of who it is, because there are many people right now today that are looking for help, but, they are, but they, 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 they're looking into the church, but the church is not releasing the anointing to set them free. They say, well, we're going to pray for you. Well, prayer is good, but we need to do more than prayer. It's time to start declaring what God has said. It's time to start speaking what God has said. The power is in the spoken word. Hallelujah. The power is in the spoken word. So every believer, every believer can cast out demons. Amen. But you've got to be willing to speak the word of God. A believer who does not cast out devils is like a person who carries around a gift. A person that does not speak the word of God to set the captives free is like a person that have a gift but don't know what to do with it. He has a gift or she has a gift and it's just there. Just think if you learn 
how to use the gift that's been given you. How many people could be set free? How many people could benefit from you walking in the authority that God has given you? How many people could benefit from it? Just think about it. Think about it. Amen? Think about it. Amen? Because every believer has the ability to cast out devils. Amen? Every believer has the ability to cast out devils. We can, we, can, we can come to Jesus and we know that he will, when we begin to use his name in faith, release the authority, we know that he will hear us. We need to have that confidence in him that we know that he will hear us. Amen? Now, let's go back to Matthew chapter 8 once again. Matthew chapter 8. And let's look at verse number 1. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 1. When he, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitude followed him. Behold, there came a leper, worshiping him, saying, Lord, if thou canst do anything, if thou canst make me, let me read that again. And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, crying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. <coughs> And Jesus, notice what he said, and Jesus put forth his hand, touched him, now note, saying, he touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately, the leprosy was cleansed. The leprosy was cleansed. The leprosy was cleansed. It was, now notice, Jesus spoke, he reached out his hand and touched him and spoke, and immediately the leprosy was cleansed. Now, you as a child of God, now notice, you if you are born again child of God, where is Jesus? He's in your heart, am I right? That's right, he's in your heart. Now, let's go to John chapter, John chapter 14. Because if he's in you, just like we just said, as a born again child of God, we know where he is. He's in us. Amen. But notice what he said right in, in John chapter 14 and verse number 10. He said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? And the Father in me. See, this is what we struggle with because we can't, we can't rationalize us being in him and him being in us. Because see, we can't see that, therefore we can't believe that. We got to get beyond that, folks. We got to get beyond it. We got we got to see that. We got to see it because this is the this is the proof that God is working in you, that God is working through you, that God is going to use you. Because see, when you can see yourself in Him and Him in you, then you can see yourself walking in Him and Him walking in you. When you reach out to touch someone, when you are ministering to someone. It's not you that is ministered to someone. It's him that lives on the inside of you that is ministered to that person. Amen. You see, you don't have the power within yourself to do it, but the greater one that lives on the inside of you has the power to do it through you. Amen. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If the greater one lives in me, then I am, and I'm willing to be used by him, and I'm setting myself in position to be used by him, guess what? He's going to take advantage of that, of that time, and he's going to use me for his glory. Amen. He's going to use you for his glory. But you've got to be a vessel. You can't, you can't, I mean, you've got to be just like he says in Romans chapter, let's go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Oh, God, I, I, the Lord just took me off my notes. I'm going to just go and follow the Holy Ghost right now. So just go with me. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And let's look at verse number, verse number, uh, glory to God. Verse number 8, verse number, uh, 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 verse number 19, verse number 19. Verse number 19 said, And being not weak in faith, considered not his own body now dead, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the dead of Sarah's womb, here we verse it up on verse number 20. Who staggered not at the promise of God through what? Unbelief. Unbelief is the enemy working against you to stop you from believing that you can do anything for the kingdom of God. <coughs> you have an enemy, and he's working overtime to stop you from believing that you can do anything for the kingdom of God. 
Amen. Notice what he says in verse number 19, verse number 20 again. He, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Now notice what he said, giving glory to God. Verse number 21, very important. Because see, you not only got to be convinced that God is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that you ask for faith according to his power that is working in you, you also got to be fully persuaded. Look at verse number 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he is able to perform. He is able also to perform. Amen. So God is never going to ask you to do something that he's going to leave you alone. Amen. God is not going to ask you to do something that he's going to walk away and leave you alone. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Amen. Yeah, just go with me. Isaiah 41. And let's look at verse number. Verse number. Uh, verse number 10. Isaiah 41, verse number 10. He said, Fear thou, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Now notice where he said, Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Oh, hallelujah. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee. In other words, God said he's going to undergird you. He's going to undergird you. As you stand on the word, he's going to undergird you. He's going to, you, you don't have to depend on your ability. You don't have to depend on your knowledge. You don't have to depend on what you can accomplish. But God is going to use you to accomplish his will in the earth. Amen. Notice what he says right here again, verse number 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. The Lord, he, he said that he's going to be with you. He said he's going to be with you. And then he said in Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 16 and verse 20, that the Lord went with them, working with them, confirming the word with sign following, so that you know that you're not going to be alone. All he's looking for you to do is just say, Lord, send me and I'll go. Remember what he said in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, I think? Send me and I'll go. Whom should I send and who will go for us? How many of us have made that statement? When we can say, Lord, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I'll go wherever you ask me to go. I'll say whatever you ask me to say. And when he started asking you to go, when he started asking you to do, when he started asking you to say, you started saying, well, they might make fun of me. It may not happen. If it don't happen, then they're going to laugh at me. You see, you start to think about what is going to happen to you when God has never put his focus on you. He put his focus on the word that he placed within you. It's the word that's in you that God is looking at. The word that's in you is coming alive. Remember, the Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Amen. Glory to God. Now, the word, in verse number 14, John chapter 1, verse number 14, and the word was made flesh. The word was made flesh. Well, when was the word made flesh? The word was made flesh once it become revelation of knowledge in our heart. The word became flesh in you. Amen. Now, there's nothing that the devil can do to stop that word from manifesting in your life. Why? Because that word has taken upon, has taken upon flesh through you. And as you begin to speak that word, that word is going to manifest just as you speak it in, out of your mouth and out of your heart in faith. God is going to confirm his word with sign following. Amen. God is going to confirm his word with sign following. So many can be free. Many can be delivered. Many can be, can, can be healed. Many can be set free from whatever the devil is trying to do to them because this is the purpose that the Son of God was manifest. First John chapter 3 verse 8 to destroy the works of the devil. To destroy the works of the devil. So the devil has no power over you, no more than what you allow him to have over you. Amen. He has no power over you, no more than what you allow him to have over you. Now notice again what it says right here in, in, in uh, 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 Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 41, I mean, chapter 41, verse 10. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that God. Oh, I feel some of that. I am with thee. Be not dismayed. In other words, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Don't allow the fear and doubt to cause you to become discouraged. Cast down every vain imagination, every high thing that exalts the gift, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bring every thought into captivity to the Holy Ghost and to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't allow those thoughts that the enemy trying to place upon you and in you to dominate your thinking. 
Cast them down. Don't meditate on them. Don't think about them. Amen. Cast them down. Because they are not sent from God. They're sent by the enemy to stop you from serving God. Amen. So he said, <clears throat> so he said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, or don't be discouraged, for I am thy God. Notice what he said, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee by the power, I will uphold thee by the right hand of my righteousness. By the right hand of my righteousness. And then notice that in verse number 11. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed, shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. You see, when you stand upon the word of God, when you stand on what God has said, when you stand on what God has said, God's word will bring to pass that which he desires for you to walk in. God is not going to allow his word to fall to the ground. God will confirm the word with sign follow. And they went, and, and they that were saved, and they that strive against thee shall, be, shall perish. Amen. They that strive against thee shall perish. God will fight your battle. See, the battle is not yours. Amen. But the battle is the Lord. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 6 now. Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. And look at verse number 10. It says, Find my brother, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Now, notice this word in the Lord uh, the, uh, is, 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 is the same, I mean, just the same and, and equal as powerful as what we read in John chapter 14, verse 10. John chapter 14, verse 10, remember what it said? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Amen. Believe thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The works that I do, I do not of myself, but the Father that, lived, that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Amen. Now, notice what it says right here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Find my brother, be strong in the Lord. Why do we got to be strong in the Lord? Because, see, he's in us. He's in us. He's in us. So when we yield to his presence, when we yield to his deity that's in us, when we yield to his to his presence in us, we become, we, we begin to we begin to abide together. We begin to agree together. We become as one. Amen. We become glory to God. We become as one. Glory to God. Now notice what it says right here again, verse uh, five. Find my brother, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Then he said, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. <coughs> Amen. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now notice again, remember, that refer back to right now, to Mark, uh, uh, to Luke chapter 10, verse number 19. Behold, I give you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. See, you've already been given the power. You've already been given God's ability. When did it come? It came the moment you said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sin, and be the Lord of my life. Hallelujah. That when it came, my friend, that when it came, my brother and my sister, when God came in your heart, and delivered you and set you free and you receive salvation because of his presence, because you ask him to forgive you of your sin, you receive his presence in your heart to be, not, 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 my God, this is powerful. Oh, glory to God. Now, if you can believe that, if you can believe that, that God has given you the power to become his son. God has given you the power to become his daughter. Amen. But you gotta believe that. You gotta believe it. So he says right here in verse number, verse number 10, if I my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not <clears throat> against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the root of the dark of this world, against the spiritual weakness in high places. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand. See, God is telling you that you will withstand if you follow his instructions. <coughs> you can withstand the principalities, the powers, and the rules of darkness world, and the spiritual witness in high places, if you follow his instruction. Well, what is his instruction? Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. And start. And I'm, I'm going to add one more thing to it. And start speaking his art, his, 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 his word. Start speaking his, 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 his statute, his, his, his law. Start declaring what he has declared. Amen. And believe what he has declared. Amen. Start standing on the word of God. Verse number 13 again, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. He says, stand, have your arm girded about with the truth. See, once you learn the truth, it's time to start walking in the truth. It's time to start standing in the truth. It's time to allow that truth to be a, 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 a strength to you. Amen? Because the, the word of God, the word of God, it has the power to deliver you. <coughs> It has the power to deliver you. It has the power to make you free. It has the power to bring you to a place of inner healing, of wholeness. It has the power to bring you to a place where you will experience God's presence in your life like never before. But you've got to come to the place like, like Abraham did over in Romans chapter 4, verse number 20. You've got to become fully persuaded. Fully persuaded, verse number 21. You've got to become fully persuaded. Amen. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct the path. Amen. So if God is telling us what to do, and we do what he said do, don't you know that God will not allow his word to fall to the ground? God's word will not fall to the ground, folks. God's word. <coughs> God's word will produce to those that will use it properly. It will produce for those that will use it properly. <clears throat> Amen. <coughs> Amen. I see that. I'm telling you, I must be. I must be doing something right because the enemy working against my voice. I must be doing something right, and I know that God is going to bring us to a new dimension in our Christian walk. And that new dimension, it has to do with us speaking the word of God, declaring what God has said, regardless of what it looked like, regardless of what we have to go through. God is looking for us to stand on his word. No matter what it is, God wants you to stand on his word. And I know what I'm talking about, folks, because, see, I used to be very sick in my young days. And I stood on God's word. And I would not let go of God's word. And God healed me. I didn't have no one to come and pray for me. I didn't have no one to come lay hands upon me. All I had was the word of God, folks, and the word of God manifest in my heart because I kept reading it until I began to, until I started believing. And when I started believing, I released my faith, and God produced a miracle in my health. And that's how I know what I'm sharing with you will work because it has already worked for me. And I have seen it work for many others as I have shared this word down through the years. Amen. God will do in his word what he said that he would do. Amen. God will do in his word what he said that he would do. And so now, I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Because you see, you need to see what God is bringing you to. Notice what it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. In other words, 
God is calling you to imitate him, to imitate him, to be just like him, to walk like him, to talk like him, to act like him. Amen. You see, you are not in this thing alone. God is going to be with you. He's going to be with you. He's going to confirm the word. And this is what he's telling us this day and hour because we're coming to a time for there are going to be people coming across your life, people coming across your path in days to come. And they're going to be looking for answers. They're going to be looking for, for, for someone that can give them a word of encouragement. And you are the one that they're going to be looking to. You are the church. You are the one that God has delegated the power to bring deliverance to the world. And he's looking at you. Amen. He's looking at you. And so he said, be ye therefore fathers of God as dear children. Amen. Be ye therefore fathers of God as dear children. Now look at the book of uh, Colossians. Colossians. Book of Colossians. Chapter 2. In Colossians chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. In Colossians chapter 2, I want to look at verse number, verse number uh, 6. Is that as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, now nobody said, so walk ye in him. That is, my God, how can we see this and not understand what he's telling us? He said in, in, in John chapter 4. John chapter 10, verse 14, John chapter 14, verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Amen. God's word in you will come alive the moment you begin to set yourself apart to believe what God has said. You just simply got to hear what God has said and believe what God has said, and you will see the manifestation of God's word on your behalf. Notice what it said right here again at Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 6. <coughs> it said, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. And notice what it said in verse number 7. Rooted, built up in him, and established in faith, in the faith. As ye have therefore, as ye have been taught, abiding therein with thanksgiving. So you need to be established in faith. You need to know that what God has said, that he will back it up. God has not called you to leave you alone. He has not called you to isolate, to isolate you that you will be just a, a lonely island. God don't need no lonely islands. He needs a man or woman that will stand firm and to declare his word. And it's time for us to begin to walk in the authority and the power that he has given us. It's time for us to lay, lay aside our differences. It's time for us to, to hold fast to the, to the vocation which we've been called, looking unto Jesus at the author and the finish of our faith, knowing that what he had promised us, he is also able to perform it in our life. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Had he not said, shall he not make it good? Glory. And so we need to understand what God is saying to us. And we need to walk in it. Notice what it said in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 13. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sin. See, once you ask Jesus to come in your heart, he forgave you of your sin. So why do you want to act like he, you have not been forgiven? If he has forgiven you, then he has forgiven you. You just got to learn now to forgive yourself. This is the biggest problem that we have in the body of Christ. We have, our biggest problem is forgiving ourselves. Thinking that we can never amount up to what God, to what God has called us to be. Because we so focus on our past lifestyle. We're so focused on what we've done to others and what others have done to us that we cannot forgive ourselves when God has already forgiven you. <clears throat> and so now you've got to learn to forgive yourself. You've got to forgive yourself. Glory to God. Now let's go to John.
John, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Hey, Amen. I'm going to be closing with this, with this one here. John chapter 1. Now, notice what it said. I quoted it to you earlier, but now I'm going to read it to you. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, notice it says, In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word with God, and the Word was God. So when you begin to meditate upon this Word and allow it to drop from your mind into your spirit, guess what's dropping in your spirit? God is dropping in your spirit. Because the Word is God. And once that Word is dropped in your spirit, that Word begins to take on life, guess who's going to be the one that's going to be walking in that flesh that's going to carry that Word of life? You are going to be one that's walking in the flesh, carrying the Word of life. The Word is going to come alive in you. Now notice what it says again, verse number one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was the life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Oh, glory to God. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light that every man, that, that was the true light which lighted every man that came into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But I like verse number 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Now, if we are sons of God, that means that my daddy is the ruler of all creation. Amen. He's the author of all life. Amen. He's the redeemer of all mankind. <clears throat> now, with me understanding that, and he's given me the power to become his son, that shows me that I can not only receive the power to be his son, oh, can I go to a little first? Thank you. Let's go to John chapter 14. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, this is so awesome. This is so awesome. John chapter 14. And I look at verse number, verse number 12. John chapter 14 and verse number 12. It says, Very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. So, now notice what he said in John chapter 1 and verse number 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen. Or you might say, they're daughters of God. But now look at verse number 12, chapter 14, verse 12. For very, very, I say unto you, that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and further me shall he do, because I go to the Father. Now, if I'm his son, now he's declared to me that I can do the works. That means that I can walk and exercise the power and authority that he's given me. Now, if I can't do it, then why is it in the Bible? I believe that what God is saying to us right now, folks, it is time for us to prepare to enter into a new dimension. It is time for us to prepare to, 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 to take a, a, bold, a bold leap into the spiritual realm like we've never walked in before. And let me tell you something. There's enemies that are trying to keep you from, from receiving it because I tell you, I tell you this, every time I speak this type of message, and I tell you that there's enemies that try to hinder, try to stop people from hearing this message, but if you hear this message and receive the message and hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you through this message, let me tell you something. Don't just listen to it one time. Listen to it over and over and over. Because the scriptures that I have given you today are scriptures that will, that will strengthen your inner man, that will cause you to begin to refocus on who you are. Because you are a child of God. You are not someone that's been cast aside. You are not a, 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 a lost cause. Amen. You are very important in the eyes of God. You are wonderfully fashioned and created in the image of God. 
Amen. There's nothing about you that God don't like. God likes everything about you. There might be some of your attitudes, some of your personalities, and some lifestyle that you take up that you don't like. But you as an individual, God loves you. He created you in his own image. It is time for you to start seeing yourself in his image and start walking like you are in his image. That way the world can see Jesus Christ in the earth today through you. Hallelujah. And I'm all I'm going to say about that today. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word today. And I thank you, Lord God, that your word will manifest and it will bring to pass in the lives of those people that what you have declared, that what you will say, Father. Not one word will fall to the ground. But God, you will confirm your word, O sign Father. And I thank you, Lord God, that your word, O oh, Father, I, I pray for those that right now understand my voice. I pray for them right now, Father. And I ask you, dear Lord Jesus, that you will touch every man, every woman right now. Let this word begin to penetrate from their mind into their spirit. Father, I release the spirit of life right now to flow right now in Jesus' name. That every man and every woman that hear this word, God, that this word will penetrate to their innermost being. And it will begin to produce as you have sent it out to produce. Your word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish that which pleases you. Father, I thank you now. I bless your people. I thank you for them. Let your word be ever magnified in their lives and in their hearts. May they begin to see themselves as you see them. May they see themselves rising up into that new dimension of the spiritual walk with you. That you, Lord God, can use them to speak the word and bring deliverance to your people all around them. God, your word has the power within itself to bring about its own fulfillment. But you just need that one that will believe it and speak it in faith. And God, you will confirm that word with sign following. And so, Father, I release that word right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, it's time for us to prepare to take our evening offering right now. And uh, those of you that's going to be sowing through the internet, go to my website, LarryBurkinMinistries.com, and there you will find the donation button. Uh, that's LarryBurkinMinistries.com. You will find a donation button there where you can where you can plant your seed there using your ATM or your credit card, amen. And also, those of you that are going to, that's going to use the, 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 the postal system to send your love off your gift or whatever, you may, uh, you may uh, send to, to make, your, make your check payable to Larry Bourbon Ministries, and then that's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. Again, that's Larry Burger Ministries, P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. And those of you that have given today, those of you that, that are going to be given today through the internet, remember, just go to my website, Larry Burger Ministries, and you will find a donation button there, and you can uh, plant your seed there. Amen. Amen. Now, I know that God going to take us to a new dimension. Amen. I'm telling you, I, I know that in my heart, just like I know that I'm standing here, that God is about to elevate the church, those that will stand on the word, those that will speak the word. God's going to elevate you to a new dimension in your spiritual walk. Amen. So prepare your heart to arrive to that new dimension, to that new area of your walk with God. Amen. And let's begin now by uh, you're by, by saying, Pastor, I believe you're talking to me. And because I believe you're talking to me, I'm going to plant a seed today. I don't have much, but I'm going to give you what I can. Amen. I'm going to give God what I can. Amen. You know, God is God's not looking for a whole lot. He's just looking for a, 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 a heart that will hear him and that will obey him. Because, see, obedience start, especially right here and right now. Amen. When you can obey God in right now, and giving of your tithes and your offering or your, or your love gift or whatever, your benevolent offering, if you can hear from God to obey God right now, this is your first step into that new dimension that God's called you to walk in. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. For those that are here today, for those that are listening by the internet, Father, I lift them up before you. And I ask you, dear Lord, 
that you will supernaturally speak to their hearts and God, that you would give them what you would have them to do. And Father, I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now just hear from God. Because the Bible says you give and it shall be given unto you. You couldn't measure fresh down, shape given, and running over shall be given to your bosom. Amen. I know that I, I know that uh, <coughs> yeah. I guess I have. I know that God wanted to do something. Because see, this message that I'm preaching today, I spoke to preach this Sunday, but God, so for some reason, He held it back until today. Amen. He held it back until today. And so we are, so we are, uh, so we are, we, we're going to be ministering this word for a little while on this message, on this, on this area, for, for uh, a little while on Tuesday nights, amen, so y'all get to stay with us, because this word is going to minister to your heart, amen, it's going to minister to your heart, it's going to cause your understanding to be enlightened, you will know the whole call of God for your life. See, this is an hour that we're living in that God looked for people that will, that will walk in the power of his word. Amen. God is looking for the people that will walk in the power of his word. Amen. So, Father, we take this offer right now for those that are sorted by the internet, Father, right now. We take this offer right now and we hold it up before you, Father. And, God, we bless this offer. We sanctify this offer. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for those that are giving in this offering today. I release the I release the, the spirit of prosperity upon them, Father. I bind every spirit of poverty, every spirit of lack, every spirit of confusion concerning finances, Lord God. Let the lies of the devil cease, Lord God, concerning their finances. And God, let the spirit of prosperity begin to rest upon them, begin to flow through them right now in Jesus' mighty name. And God, I thank you, Lord God, for bonus and grace and selling I thank you, Father, for new houses. I thank you, Father, for houses being paid off. I thank you, Father, for, for, for new vehicles, Lord God, for vehicles that, for that person to need that. You look, someone is looking for a vehicle right now because you can't get back and forth to work. You look for a vehicle, and the, you, 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 you just lost your vehicle. You just got repossessed. You just got repossessed. And God, if God's got, God's got a vehicle for you right now because you've been faithful and you're tired. And God got a vehicle for you, and it's going to come to you debt free, debt free. It's not going to cost you nothing. Oh, glory to God! Glory to God! Oh, hallelujah! Just simply receive that now. I don't know who I'm talking, but I'm talking to someone. You may be in here. You may be listening by the internet. But God, you, 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 you had a vehicle, but it got repossessed. You. But you, because you would not give up, you would not stop paying your tithe, and the enemy said you're going to lose it, you're going to lose everything. Let me tell you something. What you, what, what, what left your presence did not leave your life. God is going to bring it back a whole lot better than what was taken from you. A whole lot better than what was taken from you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just receive it. Receive it. Because I'm telling you, it's going to come. It's going to come. Hallelujah. Now, Father, we just thank you and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Those of you that have a special prayer request right now, we'll pray for you. If you have a special prayer request right now, we will pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. This is, this is my little daughter right here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Man. Stop praying. Stop praying. We pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for my daughter, and I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continually rest upon her. I release your divine, I release divine health and healing upon her, Father, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. I counsel every germ, every vital trying to attach itself to her body, and I release divine health and healing from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Anyone else want prayer? You want prayer too? Anybody that's on prayer, just be ready. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I pray, Father, for my wife, that you would bless her, that you would touch her, Father, that you would counsel every assignment against her mind, her will, her emotion, in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, Father, that you would direct her in every way that she should go. Let your will become her will. Let her will become your will. Let your word 
be a lamp to her feet and a light to her path. They will lead her and guide her in all truth. And Father, let her not be deceived, Father, but let her hear your voice and let her follow your instructions. And God, you're going to bring her through every situation that the enemy is trying to put before her to try to discourage her. God, you're going to bring her through the light and the light is going to shine bright and everything that the enemy has tried to do in dark is going to be exposed and she's going to see it for what it is. God, I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for those that are listening by the internet, those that are viewing us by the internet. I, God, I just, I release divine health and healing. I bind every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease that is trying to come upon them. I come against that spirit of poverty, lack, insufficiency. I rebuke it in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare and decree divine health. I declare and decree prosperity. I declare and decree, I declare and decree freedom from and from, from demonic addictions, from uh, alcoholic addiction, from drug addiction, in Jesus' name, I declare be free in Jesus' name. I speak to that addiction. I come in to come out of that person right now. You speak of addiction, come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, Father. Now, Father, I release divine help right now to heal that wound that caused that person to be addicted to the drug, those pain deal, in Jesus' name. Let your word minister to the hearts right now. I give you glory for it, Father. I give you glory. I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Amen. My name is Pastor Larry Burke of New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Come on and join us again on, uh, on uh, Sunday, and let us minister to you once again the word of God. And I believe that God is about to do something special in your life that's going to cause your faith to go to the next level. Amen. God bless you. This is Pastor Max. Be blessed and have a good day. Bye-bye.